What's going on? It's Hellfire with MachineMasters.com. And I got a quick little tip that I think you guys might find useful in your engineering and production. Now, we as engineers and producers spend tens of thousands of dollars every year on the highest quality studio equipment we can afford um, just in order to get the biggest and best sound that we can achieve with our budget, you know, and get as close to an industry sound as possible. Only for our music to be consumed on crappy speakers. And likewise, we spend hundreds and thousands of dollars on big speakers just so we can get a nice, fat, hard-hitting low end in our, in our music. Only for our music to be consumed on speakers that can't support those low frequencies. So, you know, what I have here is a, is a quick little tip that's going to show you how to get your kick drum to punch through on those little speakers. So here you can see I have a, a drum break going. And the kick, you know, it sounds really good. I, I love the way this kick sounds. You know, but it's just, it's all low end. You know, it's going to sound good in a club or in the studio when you where you have big speakers or in a car where you have a, a, a nice um, sound system with a, a few subwoofers. But when you play this back on a cell phone or a laptop or some earbuds, you're not going to hear this. It's just too low. Now, normally when I'm making music, I'm listening on my big... Uh, eight inch studio monitors. But when I'm doing this particular technique to check how my kick sounds on smaller speakers, I like to reference my five inch uh, studio monitors or the built-in speaker inside my actual Mac Pro computer, which is basically like a small laptop speaker itself. Or I like to listen on my MacBook or just, you know, some headphones. Um, whatever you, you know, you wanna use, uh, I suggest trying all of them um, and, and then just making sure it sounds good and consistent on all of them. Um, now, you're not going to really want to try to set this up on your 8-inch or 10-inch um, speakers because you're not really going to hear it as much. You're going to hear most of the low end. So that's why you wanna wanna, you're going to want to try to set this up while you're monitoring through some smaller speakers. So you might also want to... Um, you know, listen back on those types of speakers as you go through this video while I'm setting this up. So the first thing I want to do is I, I need to layer this this kick drum with another sound. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy the notes to a complete new track. So I'm going to go in sequence edit. I'm going to copy the events. Um, I'm going to tell it I want it bar one through nine. And I'm going to put it on track eight. And I'm going to replace whatever is on that track. I have nothing on that track now, so it really doesn't matter. And when I go to my new track, you're going to see, you know, it put the notes there. And it put the notes, you know, in the same spot as, you know, where, uh, they were on the original track. So the next thing I want to do is I want to either load a sample onto that pad on that new track. But in this case, what I did was I went to something that I felt was quicker. So I loaded up an instance of uh, Native Instruments Drum Lab. Right. So I picked uh, a preset that I like. And then I found the kick drum that I wanted to layer over it. So I went through the different ones they have. And that's the one I like, and that's the one I want to use. So if I close this out, I can see that when I press the key, it's telling me that the note that I want is on C sharp three or C three sharp. So what I need to do is I need to copy all of these notes that I just pasted and I need to move them up to that note. So I'm simply gonna transpose these. Actually, it's gonna be down. 
right about there. So now when I play the two together, you have this. And when I take, take this out, then I have just the, the low end kick. So what I do is I name this as kick punch because that's, you know, what we're trying to do. We're trying to get it to punch through, you know, the mix on the smaller speakers. And this is what it sounds like on its own. And this is together. Now, I don't particularly like the way it sounds just like that as it is. I think the kick that I'm adding has too much low end and uh, we can enhance the sound of that kick to make them blend better together. So let's bring this up. So you can hear it a little better before I. All right, that's with and without. So if you're listening on some smaller speakers now, you can already hear the difference that that adds alone. Now, like I said, I don't really like the way that sounds in that particular tone, so I'm going to enhance that kick drum that I've added by using some plugins. So the first thing I did was added a two-band EQ. And what I did with this was uh, I basically cut out the frequencies that I don't want. So, you know, this is a, a called a parametric EQ. Um, basically... Uh, this basically controls the frequency range from all the way from the bass all the way to the high end. All right. So my original kick basically takes care of everything from this uh, frequency and below. So I don't really need this second kick to overlap that frequency. So I'm going to cut that out and I'll let you hear what it sounds like, uh, you know, with that cut out and additionally um i don't really need all the high end that is that it added to punch through um to the smaller speakers uh i only need really really you really want just the mid maybe you can have a little high but um this is what i liked um when i tweaked it so i'll let you hear what this sounds like so this is without it And this is with. So that's just the first processor. Now, if I take this whole thing out, you can see that it already, um, just that alone makes a big difference. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to do was I felt that the kick had, um, you know, too much tail on it. Like it, it extended out too much. Uh, you see how it goes too long. I want it to be more of a snap, snap, snap. So what I did was I added a gate. And uh, you'll see what the gate does. Basically... Uh, a gate, you know, for those that don't know what a gate is, um, a gate basically lets sound pass through the speakers once it's past a certain threshold. So in this case, um, once the audio passes uh, 20 dB, um, the gate is going to let the audio pass through. And then here I have a closed gate setting. So this basically once the audio opens the gate this determines at what threshold level the gate is going to close so once the audio passes here it's going to stay the, the the gate is going to let the audio keep coming through the speakers until it gets back below this threshold here 
so the reason you want to do this is basically to add some roundness uh to to the the way the sound is being gated you don't you may not necessarily want it to be cut really sharp so this is going to allow it to you know round out on the end a little bit all right so this is what it sounds like without and with again without and with now another thing you're going to want to play around with is the release this also helps out with the roundness of how the the sound tails out if the release is too short it's going to sound like it's cut off you know too abruptly if the release is too long then it's not really going to get rid of the tail that we wanted to get rid of so i think the default release was about 20 I uh, bumped it up to 50. So I think that sounds pretty good right there compared to this. So if we throw that in the mix with the kick. See, it sounds a lot better because the original kick already has a bunch of tail on it or reverb or something, whatever is the drum room. So you don't want the other kick to add more of that. It's, it's just too much and it's going to add mud to your mix. So this is, again, what we have so far. That's without. Okay, so the next thing I did was once I had that, I realized that it was something in the mid um, range that I didn't like. So I basically just cut that out, and I'll let you hear what that sounds like. Just basically I put a notch somewhere around there. What you do is you, you get to sweep through. I'll show you. without it and this is with it so basically all you do is you find a frequency you don't like and then you just cut it out so again without And we can start bumping this up a little bit because as we cut frequencies, we cut gain. So All right, so you know, right then and there, I think it's already sounding a lot better. Um as compared to the original. And you know, it's real subtle, but it's going to make the biggest difference when you're listening on smaller speakers. Um, so, so, you know, that's the ultimate goal here is to make sure that everything you put in your beat is able to be heard as best as possible on anything it's played back on. Um, so the last thing that I added was just a little enhancement EQ, just uh, boosting some other frequencies that I thought, you know, um, might sound good. So this is without. And this is with it. Again, really subtle. But what I did here was I cut some of this muddiness out of 300 hertz and I boosted some of the top end a little bit. Um, actually, it was some of the top end that I actually chopped out of here. But, uh, you know, I wanted to overlap those frequencies and, and bring it up a little bit. So, you know, I used this to do that. is 
without and with. So to get a better understanding of exactly what this is doing, you can go ahead and solo it and we can So you can hear the muddiness around 300 that I cut out. So that's basically all the processing that I did um, to get that sound. And then basically all I did was blended it to taste. Just blended it in. So, you know, you know, it's not like like I said, it's something real subtle and, you know, uh, real simple, but it can be really effective in, in, in the end result when your stuff is being played back while people are on a run listening on their cell phone speaker or, uh, you know, earbuds, like I said, or, or even on their laptop. Um, it's going to make the biggest difference. Your, your kick drum is not just going to disappear. So uh, I hope you guys found found this uh useful uh you know leave a comment if you got any questions uh leave them um subscribe uh i'll try to answer questions you know as they come in you know and i have time and uh you know check me out on the next one